we need to gravitate the ball, and then we need to move the ball, and finally we need to check stage boundaries for collision. So when it hits the walls or the ground, it's going to have to bounce. So, And whenever we uh, press the mouse button, we are going to have to test for whether it actually hit the ball or not. And then call the corresponding hit function. So, uh, so this is our outline of what we need to have accomplished. So we'll take it one step at a time. First, gravitate the ball. Pretty easy to do. Um, let's first create a, a constant value to represent our gravity. And that's going to be a number. And constants are, by convention, all capitalized, uh, separated by underscores if you need more than one word. We'll set that to um, just, I don't know, two. And now that we have our gravity, um, we want to gravitate our ball, which means we need to increase the velocity. So we also need to keep track of velocity. Uh, we'll do vx for horizontal velocity and uh, vy for vertical velocity. And we want to initialize it here, initialize them to 0 each. Okay. <clears throat> now obviously when something gravitates it accelerates downward so we want to do vy plus equals gravity. So every frame, we're going to have um, downward velocity increase by, a f um, not a factor, but arithmetically increased by a gravity value. And that's, that's all it takes for gravitating the ball. Let's uh, go to the next step, move the ball. Also pretty easy. Ball, x coordinate of the ball is going to be updated by um, the value in our x velocity variable, and same thing with y. So, a uh, ball moves by this many uh, pixels, and y moves by this many pixels. And that is it for moving the ball. Uh, check stage boundaries for collision. This is going to be a little, um, it's going to take a little more code, so let's actually create a function for this. The reason I do this is because, especially in our um, main function here, we want to keep it clean and readable. We don't want a whole um, page of code in the middle just doing one task. General rule of thumb, if it's going to be more than a couple lines of code, create a function so that um, whoever reads your code can, that includes yourself, um, can take a look at every few lines or the comments on every few lines and see exactly what's going on throughout the whole uh, whole movie or application or game. Okay, so let's go ahead and define this function. And that's also going to return nothing. Uh, how do we check for collision. Okay, we what we have to do is uh, detect whenever the left side of this ball crosses the left boundary of the stage, or top side of the ball with the top boundary, and so on and so forth, right side and bottom side. So let's first calculate all the sides of the ball. So we have our four vari variables that will represent those values. Um, let's go ahead and calculate now. Left is going to be ball.x. Before we do that, let's make sure the ball is centered. Right now, the ball's location is represented by this point here, the upper left point coordinate. But 
Uh, just to make things a little easier, let's center the ball. So the width is 100, the height is 100, so we want to make it negative 50 coordinates. So now the ball is, the coordinate representing the ball is at the center of the ball. Go back to the stage. Um, oh yeah, and to edit our movie clip, you just double click on it. Or alternatively, you could double click on the library object right here, and it gives you a more uh, clean stage to work on. All right, go back to the main stage. It's centered. Now, um, the left side of our ball is going to be calculated by taking the x coordinate of the ball and subtracting um, ball width divided by 2. Now, these parentheses aren't necessary because uh, ActionScript or Flash does preserves the order of operations and everything. But just to make it more readable, we'll do that. Probably didn't need to say that. Um, right side, oh, in case you didn't get that, the ball x minus ball width divided by 2. It's because we have ball x and half the width. Subtract it, and we have the left side. So we want to add it next time for the right side. All the x plus, we got that. And then bottom is going to be ball dot y minus. Uh, since the width and the height are the same, it doesn't really matter, but I don't know, just in case you can change it to be an ellipse later or something. Uh, top is going to equal, oh, I'm sorry, top is actually minus, bottom is plus. So ball dot y plus ball dot height divided by 2. All right, now that we have all our sides, let's go ahead and do the collision checking. So if left is less than 0, 0 being the left side of the stage, uh, and our, the velocity of the ball is less than 0, so basically what that is testing for is if we're passing the left boundary and the ball is moving left, then we want to detect a collision. Because if it's actually moving right, um, it could actually be escaping or coming out of the edge of the stage back into the stage and we we would be um, triggering a collision then too in which case what you would see is the ball moving past the edge and then bouncing and trying to move out but then bouncing again and it would basic basically um, be shaking over here and we don't want that so uh, we want to trigger a collision only when the ball is moving towards that wall so what we have when velocity is less than zero, moving left, and the left side of the ball is less than zero, beyond the left side of the boundary. If that's the case, then we want it to bounce. Uh, we'll save the bounce code for later. Else, if the right side is greater than stage dot stage width, um, uh, and x velocity is greater than zero, moving right, then we also need to trigger a collision. And finally, we want to do the same for uh, up and down, the y uh, velocity. Um, now the stage uh, stage variable also has um, just a regular, if you take a look at this, stage.height and stage.width. It also has these. Now you might be wondering what's the difference between stage.stageHight and stage 